I feel like I'm running out of ways to introduce 3-0. Like, this is a great episode. But I've said that every episode so far, and it's been true. Every episode this season has blown me away. And I'd like to say that this is more so than the others, but I don't think I can because they're all just so good. So this episode, we got a lot more about the witches. Just their personality, seeing them. We got Daphne and uh, Typhoon and Minerva and... Well, like you don't, of course. But then Satalia, and like, why? What? What is going on? I keep thinking that we will get answers at some point, <laughs> but every time I get a little bit of an answer about something, I just have like five thousand more questions. So let's start at the beginning, and hopefully this episode recap thing won't be too long. But yeah, I like have a page and half of notes, and this is me only hitting the highlights. There's so much to re zero. So at the start, we learn that Ekidona thinks what Satalia did to Subaru is terrible. This shows a lot of things. For one, it shows that there is definitely a lot of animosity between Ekidona and Satalia. But I guess that sort of makes sense because Satalia is the one who ate the rest of them. But ate and kill. I wonder if that's exactly the same. I also wonder if eating like Satalia did ties into the whole gluttony thing in Daphne and... I don't know, that's interesting, maybe. But this does confirm what we knew for a while, and that's that, in fact, Italia is behind everything. And Ekidona makes a very interesting comment when they're talking about Subaru's return by death. And that is that Subaru has the power of a witch. Which makes sense, mainly. It's that Subaru got his power to return by death from Satalia. But if that is the power of a witch, does that mean they can also have the power of return by death? Can Satalia also reach that time if she ever dies? Maybe that's the reason she is still alive. And how do you defeat an enemy like that? In fact, like, how would a battle between Subaru and Satalia work? One kills the other, then time resets. Of course, that assumes that Satalia does have that power, but... Well, it would seem odd if Subaru is the only one who does have that. I think. I feel like the show is not going to give the main character a super special power like that just for the sake of the story. ReZero is better than that. But we also learn that there is not a limit to the amount of time Subaru can return by death, or at least Ekidona doesn't think there is. And then she also says that it is the witch's intense delusion that causes him to return by death. And I have no idea what that means, but I'm pretty sure it's important. Hopefully we'll get more of that, like, later on. Because this is, like, is Italia, like, so obsessed, believing so much that Subaru will survive that just makes it real? What exactly are the witch's powers? Like, how do they work? Like, we know they're incredibly powerful. We learn later on that Daphne made the white whale, the great rabbit, and the black snake. But how strong are they? How powerful are they? How does that compare with all the other uh, magic people and things in this world? I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. But we also learn that she gave him this power so that Subaru wouldn't die. And it lets him redo destiny and basically not allow him to make mistakes. So that only applies to mistakes that would kill him. Sadly, not those around him. Like Rem. And it also makes a comment that Subaru can overcome destiny, but with a great sacrifice. And he cannot undo the sacrifices to get them back, which... One of the things that the end of uh, Season 3, with that after credit scene, sorry, the season showed, is that Subaru's powers are not infinite. Yes, he does return from death every time he dies. But there are limits to his power and things he's worried about. He might have an incredibly broken ability, but in ReZero, that doesn't mean everything. Not Sure, he goes through a ton of suffering through all of his deaths, but even then, he's not guaranteed to get, get a happy ending with everyone he cares about. But Subaru pushes on, resolves to return by death as many times as it takes, which, yeah, that ties into the things we saw in the opening, which that was cool to see. And I love Ekidona here, how she seems to be enticing Subaru to thank him, and then they tie into him asking her questions because she wants that. 
I feel like Ekidona is sort of like falling in love with Subaru. Like she has no idea how to handle him and it's starting some sort of attraction. Like she even makes a comment that he has a way of seducing witches. Which that actually begs more questions. Witches, plural. She's referring to himself, it would seem, but also Satalia. Though that also begs the question, why and how did he seduce Italia and why does she love him? Big question for later on, by the way. It's like that that's so many questions. Like what is going on there? But we're not there quite yet. Instead, we're going to meet a few of the other witches. And basically Echidona is letting them take her place. She means to do so with Daphne, the witch of gluttony, but instead the witch of Pride Typhoon shows up and is the lolly and then asks Subaru if he's the bad guy. And when when he touches her hand, she mentions that, well, he doesn't feel pain, so he must not be, but his arm comes off. And then he breaks. Like, literally, his body falls apart. And I'm confused. She makes the comment that he sees himself as a sinner despite not being a bad guy, and that, like, kind of fits the whole idea of pride, sort of? But yeah, I have no idea, like, what is up with her? What is she doing? What does she want? Then we have Minerva show up, who is also quite weird, and is basically punching everything and healing Subaru through her punches. Which is odd. I like Subaru's comment after all this is over, that he has learned that Echidona is the most sane of the witches. Which kind of scares me, because Echidona seems like very calm, put together. But what if that's not true? What happens when she is pushed to her limit? And why is she the one who is like in control of the body whenever Super comes and not one of the other six ones? There are questions. But then we have Daphne show up and Subaru is giving off a scent that she loves and she wants to eat him. And we learn that she made the man beasts, the great rabbit, the white whale, and I would assume the black snake, because they would feed a ton of people. But in her own twisted logic, people shouldn't eat without also considering the fact that they could be eaten. Which, well, I mean, we saw the rabbit eat Subaru, and we could assume everyone else? Which, well, more questions. Like, why was the rabbit inside the sanctuary? Did it come from the outside? Is it inside hiding somewhere? Why did it pick now to attack? If we learn that the rabbit is attracted to a giant source of mana, so what is that giant source? Is it like Amelia or Puck, maybe? I mean, Puck's a spear, so he could have a ton of mana, so that, maybe? Yeah, I, I have no idea. And even here, learning a little bit more about them just raises more questions. That's kind of what's so great. Though nine episodes into the season, I wish I understood more about what was going on. I remember when I made a video before the season, like why I was excited. I mentioned I was excited to finally get answers. And I'm pretty sure for every answer I got, I have like 27 more questions. Maybe 28. Yes, I just made that number up. So, yeah, and then... Daphne basically laughs at Subaru saying, well, if you can defeat all my man beasts, you're welcome to try. And yeah, that's... I hope we get more of Daphne and the rest of the witches too. Echidona is pretty great though. I like her. And Minerva. <laughs> and even Typhoon though, I like, have no idea what to think of her. So yes, we get back to Subaru and Echidona and I love the dynamic between them. There's just a special way Subaru gets along to people he's close for, like Amelia, and we saw that with some with Otto and his family, and he has that same sort of relationship with Echidona, which I think is really cool. It's one of the things in Subaru's personality that makes him so stand out, and I'm not really sure the best way to describe it, but I think if you've seen it, seen it, and but I think if you've seen enough of Subaru, well, you'll understand. But then Subaru is basically growing faint. He can't stay in here much longer. Then we find out that Subaru wants to be able to come back to Akidona later on to basically ask questions and just have someone who understands and gets him. I talked about so I talked about this some in my last video too. How that's just a thing that Subaru really needs and hasn't had until now. But of course, a price must be paid for Subaru to remember this one on the outside, and that price is the handkerchief he got from Petra. Sort of. Like, she touches it, and that's all. And, like, physically, he still has it. He even has it in the world before he leaves. So, what exactly does that payment mean? 
is that going to be like he gave Petra up to Echidona? Like so far, Echidona seems to be on his side, but she's a witch and doesn't seem fully trustworthy. He even makes a comment that he cannot trust anything she says, even though he kind of does. So what does that price represent? Is he like going to lose uh, Petra in a way that he cannot get back? Like, is Elsa going to tax a mansion before he can get back, no matter what he does to reset, or will he get past the next reset point and find out she's dead? That would be bad, or worse than dead. I don't know what worse than dead would be, like become a servant of Echidona. That would be weird. But yes, Subaru wakes up, Amelia's missing, so he goes looking. And then the episode gets weird. Not that it wasn't weird before, of course. But he goes outside and a shadow is everywhere. Everyone's missing. And then Satalia shows up. And then she, like, has her tentacles or claws or shadows or whatever they are reach out to Subaru. And as she does so, she says that she loves him over and over and over again. And as she does that, he thinks about all the other people that he's loved. Ram and Petra were the two that I noticed, but I'm sure there are others in there. And it was just so creepy and weird, and I loved it. Something I forgot to talk about earlier is that when Subaru was there with Akidoni near the start of the episode, we saw what looked to be Satalia's hands reaching out to him somehow during that. Though he didn't notice, and Akidona didn't, or if Akidona did notice, then she didn't say anything. So now we get Satalia here going all out, kind of, sort of, and I, I'm confused. I am extremely confused. Like, Satalia was supposed to be in some far off distance place. So why is she here? What drew her here? And why in this timeline and not any of the others? Was Subaru just asleep for a long time? And she showed up because of that. Did the rabbits not show up then too? Or was, or maybe Satalia came and that's what tracked the rabbits in the other reset. That could be. I, I have no idea though. And the I love zoos were just so overpowering and creepy and weird. And there is a whisper of like almost like ASMR. It felt like the show knew that people would be watching it through headphones. And just that whisper in your ear when, during a scene like that is so great. But then Subaru is about to be taken over by her or consumed by her, or I don't know what she's doing to him. But Garfield saves Subaru because Garfield is great. Though after they get away, Satalia appears to be leaving the barrier, going after the mansion, and Subaru has no idea how to stop her. But of course, the episode is not over here, and we get an after credits scene. I kind of feel that every time their endings credits play, there's an after credits scene. I don't know if that's quite true, though. But I wanted to look at Roswell's words specifically. He says, what terrible luck. And without even knowing the outcome of the trial. If you wish to walk through hell, I will accompany you. If you wish to live in hell, then hell is what I shall strive for. Try not to make any mistakes next time. Natsuki Subaru. What are those words meaning? What is he saying here? Obviously, things are not going according to plan. Like, Satya shows up and is basically consuming everything. And it starts, he says, even without knowing the outcome. So the question is, knowing the outcome of the trial? So is Satya here because Amelia supposedly failed the trial, even though she hasn't yet? Or is it if someone fails enough times, then she will consume everything? So is he talking to Satalia here? That would be obvious. And it's like he would be on her side, saying that if she wishes to walk through hell, he will accompany her. Or if she wishes to live in hell, then hell is what he will strive for. But that seems almost too obvious. Especially in the end. He then addresses Subaru. So is all of this to Subaru? That feels like how it would make sense from like a literary writing perspective, say some cryptic things and then reveal the target. So is Satalia coming what Subaru wished for, even without knowing it? Or, or, is this what Akidona wishes for? Did Akidona somehow summon Satalia here? We already know that Roswell is on Akidona's side. Sort of, maybe, I think. Like he has some sort of relationship with her. So 
you actually that probably is the most obvious one but then why would he turn to Subaru with his last line so you try not to make any mistakes next time this means that Rouse will know that Subaru is going to die and will be given another chance and hopefully do things right so how does he know that Roswell has not been told by Subaru. We know that. Subaru cannot tell anyone about Return by Death except for Echidona. So that means the two characters who would know about his power would be Satalia, because she gave them to him, and Echidona, who knows everything about Subaru. The potential is that the other witches could also know, but I don't think that's important right now. Roswell knows. And that means he would have had to find out either through his own powers or whatever, or learn from Echidona or Satalia. So I wonder, did Echidona tell him? Do they have some sort of connection where he would know? And if so, that would make his lines make a lot of sense. He's in service of Echidona. Maybe. But why in, is this Echidona's doing that? Because it feels like it's Satalia's doing I'm completely lost here and just speculating, going in circles. So I'm going to wrap up this video before it becomes any longer. Thank you for watching. Comment what you think of my crazy theories. And again, please no spoilers beyond episode 9. And yeah, I'm at a loss here. Great episode. Fantastic episode. Fantastic series. I definitely need to take a look back at the whole series when this season is over. Just because there will be so much to unpack when I get some, but definitely not all of the context. So yeah, uh, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, I suppose, and subscribe if you want more because, well, I like seeing those numbers go up. So thank you, though, for watching, and I will see you next time.